So hello, hello everyone. My name is Denise Akera. First of all, I want to thank you girls. You're amazing for organizing this incredible workshop and uh, tour and everything. So Marianne, Sylvia, Anne, I'm really happy to know you and thank you for uh, also offering uh, this slot to a new type of activities because it was always hardware. So the idea for this DIY bio session was to introduce also some other makers and other types of maker activities in Asia. And I'm very happy to introduce uh, my guests here and collaborators basically. First of all, uh, Andreas from Indonesia, from Jakarta, from an organization called Life Patch. He will tell us shortly also something about Life Patch. And um, on, on the other side, Shingo, who came from Tokyo Hackerspace and from Japan, and who also, uh, they al already said something. But uh, the purpose of the workshop and this meeting was more to also show these other places where make makers activities happen, and in some sense to show these extremes, because when we think about Indonesia, we think about Bali, but I want to convince you that there are awesome things happening in Jakarta. they have a fab lab, they have two organizations doing open science hacking type of projects just in Georgia, and there are other places like Bandung, Jakarta, you will probably maybe tell us like about some other places in Indonesia. So there are maker communities that we need to reach out and somehow it would be nice that these communities start interacting and meeting. And on the other side, Japan is our most developed and model uh, country for all technologies. And in the middle, somehow we feel here with William View from Singapore. So also I want to introduce William Hall uh, the guy who organizes all our maker activities in Singapore and uh, we often you know share information collaborate so somehow this is like this strange network here Singapore Indonesia and Tokyo and um, the way it will work I hope we'll have something like what 15 20 minutes of just short talk then I would like Andreas in the meantime to um, give the kits we have, we prepared, we will do like a little workshop on how to turn a webcam into a microscope. And you may think it's a very simple and like funny thing, but actually with this project, a lot of activity started in Indonesia. So this little hack basically enabled, I would say quite a revolutionary science in Indonesia. They're becoming a model country for how to do open science and citizen science projects thanks to this. And um, uh, then we will continue while you're working with the webcams. Shingo will also show us how his incredible machines work. So we'll start with, with microscopes as the most simple technology that when you see the first image on your microscope, you will start loving anything that has to do with biology. And we, we, and we hope to end up with these open PCR tools, which will turn you into some synthetic bio hackers which Shingo will present. I'll just skip the part on me because I already talked. These are, these are my collaborations. I just want to keep that slide for a minute because there are some amazing people in Singapore all around the world supporting these activities. And as you can see, they're also in Nepal, actually you cannot know. Karkana Asia also wanted to join, but they were not able to do it this time. I hope some next time uh, they will be here with us. And it's a global network from the States to Europe, to Asia, and we often meet and collaborate. Maybe I'll just show one project that shows how such collaboration looks. This is at the House of Natural Fiber, which is another Indonesian organization where Andreas was member before. He just moves around and creates new organizations. And back in 2012, we created this nomadic science lab for molecular gastronomy. So it was in their fab lab where we took this mobile food truck called Ankrinyan, and we turned it into a bit of a, sci a mobile science laboratory and a place where we perform some simple like science, um, uh, science protocols. So this is how it looked in the beginning. It was very messy. We put some extra functionality to that movable lab. So there was a, a GPS. You could see where we are in the city. There were some basic tools we needed to perform uh, the, hack uh, uh, the hacking. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had a music system, we had a vertical garden, bioreactor, I don't know how much, can we turn off maybe this slide because it's really bad. Okay, perfect. And then, of course, we, we, no, 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 that's fine. I think this is perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. No, I think it's perfect this way. Um, 
So basically we took something from the local market, like a scanner, we turned it into a UV illuminator. Of course, we will do this webcam hacked into microscope. And then we took like a simple recipe for a local dessert called, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I forgot this like little pearl um, <laughs> dessert it's called. And it's made out of starch. And we decided to use a technique called verification and recreate this traditional Indonesian dessert with like wine, uh, wine verified uh, spheres. And basically, this is how it, yeah? Sorry, I, just because there was shuffling, can you just go back to that Which one? food truck one and just explain one more what that first yeah, uh, one back? Like there was like, sorry, this thing That's about packing up a street food. Yeah. Yeah, I was just interested in what that was and I kind of missed okay, it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So it looks like this. Yeah. You see, I have, how many of you have been to Indonesia? No one. Okay, okay, few, few. So what you see on an Indonesian streets are these type of food trucks. They're like mo mobile food trucks, and it's the most common way you get food in, in everywhere in Indonesia. And it's all kinds of food. Different type of mobile food trucks present different type of food. So we decided to took this mo most common thing you see on an Indonesian street and turn it into science lab for food science experiments. So molecular gastronomy uses some basic scientific techniques to create like interesting like food experiences with texture or so on. And another thing was that it's considered a posh cuisine that happens only in some restaurants in Chicago and New York City. So we decided to take this posh recipes and just put it on the streets of Georgia Carter where all this food hacking basically happens. So we bought one of these food trucks. It was quite cheap from a local guy who didn't need it anymore. And we just decided to, um, to you know, put different new functionality to this food truck. So we put a sound system, which is sometimes common, but uh, we, we used all local tools. We went to the local market for a secondhand type of uh, machines and tools, and we bought everything from there. And then slowly we start putting different pieces uh, of stuff. Uh, this is just a few pictures how it looked like, but I may just go back here. Uh, this is maybe the picture that shows a bit what was on the food truck on the right side uh, <coughs> with these green leaves. That was a vertical garden, which we uh, used the Fab Lab um, uh, machines to basically design it and cut it. It's here. And then this was our sound system, which we later integrated on the top of the food truck. This is a bioreactor for algae. So we wanted to create this movable lab, basically. Yeah, and then we took a scanner from that local market. And when you do any type of microbiology experiments, you need also to kill the stuff you don't want there to be. So we just changed the light into these UV lights, and we created this basic science equipment you need, the UV illuminator. This is what we will do today, hacking webcam into a microscope. And you, know, you may ask me, so what type of science experiments you did on that street? And this is the science experiment we performed. We basically recreated these little spheres from a local wine because the Indonesia, both Indonesian organizations, uh, and Andreas is one of the, he doesn't talk about it, but he's one of the main wine producers in Jakarta. They, um, they ferment different kinds, like 40, you said, 40 local fruits into into wines which is uh, and they use quite unique yeast they developed after over the years and these type of spheres are similar to a local famous dessert so that was the experiment we worked with the local university ugm that has an amazing microbiology and biotech department which is very often works with like citizen science projects they go to local village communities and help them with different issues so the local uh, the students helped us test the protocol for verification or making this wine. Uh, and I will skip these things, just show you a few pictures. It doesn't look that appealing, as you can see. They're like little jelly stuff. And not everyone was happy <laughs> when they tested it. <laughs> some of the stuff was gross. But it, it, was, very, it, had a, it was very beautiful. It had some, something nice, like romantic, about the candles and the batteries that were um, used to have some music and so on. I mean, I'll explain why I'm doing this. I'm a philosopher, science technology studies person. And for me, this is building such prototypes and working with hackers and makers is basically like um, getting inspiration and testing some ideas. 
So I'm really curious how we can support research in developing countries through this open source hardware equipment. And that is why I follow so closely because I find in Indonesia amazing case of that. So I'm, I'm curious how the DIY bio movement can help um, these activities and we are actually trying to create a network of geeks that will do these exchanges like travel to different countries and basically um, show some protocols and hack with the local communities. Um, this will be more about how development of such open source hardware equipment look like. Uh, like over the years I notice a certain cycle. It usually starts with a workshop like this where a prototype is designed and then it somehow spreads into different educational activities, art activities and uh, slowly it becomes like more professionalized scientific tool or at least this is what happened in, in, in Indonesia and I think right now the stage is that it, 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 start, it, uh, it defines a search, uh, certain uh, research infrastructure. I'll just show it, uh, an example of tool this is a turbidity sensor. I actually brought it with me, so I'll send it around. Uh, it was a tool developed between Indonesia and Switzerland or this like global organization of geeks called open biology geeks called Hacteria, where I'm a member. I'll just pass it around. You can have a look at it. And it's a USB board, basically, that can have a diode on it and gather some data which you can use to analyze water samples. The interesting thing about this tool is exactly um, this part. It is uh, this Gnus, Gnusbuino and baby Gnusbuino, which is even more simplified board, which was designed originally in Switzerland. But then slowly through this workshop, it actually moved to Indonesia where the guy even simplified it more, you will tell us maybe, and uh, made it even cheaper. And look, it's much nicer, and it's called baby, baby Gnusbuino Tropical. That is how our friend Mark Dussier named it and you know it opens all these possibilities first of all to build the chat the cheap lab equipment but also to rethink the future of lab equipment maybe we can connect arduino and labs and create these more elaborate lab on a chip technologies the question is where it will go next will it go to shenzhen and we hope so so uh, we hope some of these uh, open markets for electronics will start supporting also diy bio projects and lab equipment uh, that, that needs this because right now it's uh, quite like uh, not very professional let's put it this way mm -hmm. so you know I'm, I'm wondering whether these early prototypes this will ever develop into something like do-it-yourself kits I, I think they will um, this is live patch um, I don't know Andreas do you want to tell us do you want to continue now Do you want to use your computer? I think it's better because he's the member, he started it. I have some nice pictures, so you just want to tell us something and I'll show pictures. Yeah, so this is the logo and this is the space. As you see, it looks very posh. This is our friend Akbar, <coughs> who is one of the members. He's a researcher at Microbiology Lab. Um, this is the environment of Bugisan, where all this miracle happens. And I don't know, maybe if you can just summarize how all the all that microscopy project started. I'll just tell you what I think about it, and I'll, it will be short. So it starts in 2009 with one workshop, and basically by 2013, there are these, um, it's a kit which helps the, it's a stage for the microscope to hold and to be usable. So it's amazing that from an early prototype introduced, it becomes basically a form of a kit. And what is also now is very often you guys like combine it with some traditional crafts. So it's also, for me, this is like fascinating to see that there is some combination of traditional crafts and this lab equipment. This is just a few examples of another organization that works closely with them. Uh, that works with uh, recycled glass and they were able to uh, create some projects with that. Okay, in terms of function, I see very often you use these microscopes for, for workshops with kids, so it's like an educational tool, but it's also a professional scientific tool because I know Akbar is now using it to do this measurement of bacteria, like a bacteria colony counters and to do like a serious scientific research. But it's also, so yeah, but it's also a tool I'll just go back here. But it's also tool that is used for VJing. So they, even this tool that is passing around is used just to gather data and create some interesting visuals. 